<laughs> Call the meeting to order. Have the motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delore. Resolve the agenda for the December 19th, 2017 <laughs> regular meeting. Council be received. Discussion? All in favor? <coughs> Opposed? It's carried. We have the motion moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Delore, resolve the minutes of the December 5th, 2017 regular meeting council be adopted as received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. We have the public hearing on the variation order dated December 19th, 2017. I'll call the hearing to order on variation application 6, 2017. The purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against the following variation application to allow the construction of a deck at the front of the house and to vary the setback distance from 30 feet to 22 to the front of the deck on the property described as lot 37, plan 23706 Park Drive. The requirements of section 169 of the Planning Act have been adhered to. I request any persons making representation to the hearing state their name and civic address. Do you have any communication with anybody, Julie? No. Any questions from Council? No. Then having heard all present, I adjourn the hearing. We have the motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delorier. Resolved the variation order application 6, 2017 being to allow the construction of a deck at the front of the house and to vary the setback distance from 30 feet to 22 feet to the front of the deck on the property located at lot 37 plan 23706 Park Drive be approved. Further be it resolved that this approval is subject to the approval for all other required permits. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, as per our agenda, item 4-2, we have Reg Rivet uh, as a delegation on the Sunday shopping hours. Welcome to our council meeting, Reg. You can just come to the table if you wish. Thank you. <coughs> so just go ahead and start your presentation and council may have some questions or something throughout it or at the end. Okay. okay. Well, thank you for letting me come and speak on behalf of this uh, um, bylaw that you're looking at. Uh, last time I came to council was in the old building and it was to do with this very same matter. Came to the valley in 2001 and there was no Sunday shopping at that time in the valley or limited with and so I came as a delegation and spoke against uh, Sunday shopping. And uh, I'm a minister here in the valley. And uh, I was just thinking of it on Sunday. We had a bit of a Christmas program. And I thought, really, I don't, I don't work on Sunday. It was, it was 10 after 12 before I got to the pulpit. And I thought, how could I give my 40 minute sermon and not? Like, I'm just going to talk to these people. And so I just talked. I don't know if I talked longer than I was <laughs> originally intended to, but, but some people think ministers only work on Sundays. But I, I enjoy an opportunity to get together with, with those of like faith. That, we meet in, in a building and, and we talk. It's not really worked. I, I do other activities through the week. I canceled the meeting tonight so that I could come and speak to you. And, uh, and so I try to refrain from working on Sunday as much as I can. And uh, actually I was talking to some business owners today, I asked them why they weren't open on Sunday or or why they are open the hours that they are. Because it seems to me that with the existing rules that we have, 
there's enough hours for a person to shop in our valley. And as I talked with them, I said, like, is it going to make a difference if you open at 9 Sunday morning or at 12? People are still going to go to Yorkton if they want to go to Yorkton. That three hours isn't going to make much difference. And that's my, my understanding is the, the rule is to change it from opening at 12 to opening at 9. Uh, or up, allowing that to take place. Um, and so I would, obviously I'm speaking against uh, this, uh, this bylaw. It seems that adding these hours on, especially on Sunday, isn't going to, to make that much difference. And the owners I talked with, they said like they need a day off even some family time together. And uh, and even if they were open on Sunday, that would take that opportunity away from their employees. And as I thought about it more, it seemed to me like it's more, it seems to me that it's management that pushes for Sunday shopping and it's not managers that work on Sunday. And so it almost seems like a selfish proposal, and, and I don't mean to offend, that's just the word that comes to mind, is that I would push for someone else to, to not have a day off, but to work in, in my absence. Um, and so I don't really see the, the benefit to to accepting this, uh, to accepting this bylaw, I actually see it as a, as a hindrance, as it would take from others' opportunities to to have a rest or to have family time or whatever they would want to do. Already, I have people that leave church early because they work at twelve or whatnot, and. Uh, and, and this is just going to make it worse for those that have to work. And so, um, I guess that's where all I have to say is. Good. Thank you, Rick. Any counselors have any questions? Counselor, I, I appreciate so much how well you spoke of what you said. Absolutely. Why, why wouldn't we think that way? However, I, I wonder about those who can only work on Sunday, who may need the money to live the lifestyle they choose, or may just to live. So I worry about that part of the equation. That's your comments, so yep. thank you for that. So any, any other comments? If not, the last chance for you to say something, Rich? Well, like it, it just seems that there's few businesses that would take advantage of, of this bylaw to change their hours. Some already decide not to be open Saturday or Sunday. And, uh, and I know that Winnipeg has said you can be open from 9 to 6. That's up to each, uh, each jurisdiction to decide. And, and we've decided 12 to 6 up to now. And uh, maybe it's just part of of my uh, makeup, but there's times when it's okay to be different. And so, uh, yeah, I don't want to prolong my discussion. I usually talk till 12 o'clock. <laughs> um, but just again, I, I appreciate the opportunity to, to come and, and, and speak. Well, thank you very much for your presentation. I'm sure council will consider it when they make their decision. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. So we'll consider it continue on with uh, correspondence uh, item five on the agenda, the letter from Swan Valley West regarding home care and their proposal, what they're proposing to do, um, I think is coming from one of their counselors, is that they, um, 
in the rural municipality people who are homebound and need home care, but they plan is to clear their roads sort of first in their road clearing operation. I don't know if this could be applied to the town at all, if there's an issue in the town I mean, for comments from councillors. I guess we can see how they make out. I mean, they, they have a plan, but they're missing the key piece, and that's knowing where these people are. So, you know, maybe we can discuss it once we see if the, if the province is willing to let that information be known or, or what kind of system we'll use to, uh, to be able to implement this. Because right now, it sounds like it's a honorable thing, but they're at a standstill until the province uh, uh, fills in the other piece of the puzzle. Okay, any other comments? Councillor White. I, I would like to believe that PMH had been sharing some of that information with uh, our neighbours <coughs> on the street here. And then we would see how that works. I don't know. Is it as important in where we live as opposed to out there? Um, and I think, I think they're, they're, that process has begun. Okay, any other comments? Okay. okay. Thank you. The next corresponds to AMO update as December 12, 2017. <coughs> when I click that on mine, okay, just updates of staff. While we're on that matter, uh, at Council's request, I contacted the Reed of the RMS uh, Minotonis Bozeman regarding uh, the demise of the EEM home district and their going to set up a meeting called meeting maybe the chairman in the first part of the new year so that was at your request <coughs> okay the third item under correspondence the letter from the Swan Valley Sp uh, Splash Park email comments on that particular email Councillor Jacobson well, uh, this is a, a bit of a surprise to me as far as, uh, you know, what their intentions are and, and handing it over. Uh, when Councillor uh, Deloria and I met with the, the committee uh, last month, I did not get the impression that this is what they were intending. In fact, they were talking about a thousand, uh, roughly about a thousand square foot uh, footprint, which they're talking about three in here. So. I don't know where, where all this is coming back from. I think that maybe the whole group needs to meet with us and then have a, a, a frank discussion and know exactly what's going on here because it sounds like there's more than one person speaking for this committee as far as what the direction is. Yeah, I, I think we need to nail down who actually speaks on behalf of this group and, and what their decision-making process is because it sounds in, in here like they've decided on what uh, what type of filtration it'll be uh, as far as, and, and when the meeting Councillor Jacobson and I attended, it didn't quite sound like that decision had been set in stone, so to speak, uh, as much as it does in this letter. So really getting conflicting messages here. Councillor Sackle. Yeah, because I believe, you know, the original resolution that we had sent and the one that we sent again, we said that, you know, we supported the theory, but we weren't going to be a part of it as uh, operating or taking over operating costs and now it seems to be changing again so I agree with Councilor Jacobson and Glory that maybe we have to sit down with them and find out a clear path or what, which way they're actually going because I don't want to put my name on this right now. Okay, any other comments? Ditto. Okay. Now Julie, has you communicated with Shane? No. Okay, I thought there was a suggestion of a meeting sometime in the new year. <coughs> oh yes, that he did tell Patty that uh, they'll come as a delegation in the new year. He um, he's having trouble getting around right now. So he wanted to just postpone it until January. Okay. No other comments on that. Okay, we'll go to reports. We have a superintendent works report. <coughs> Any questions to Derek on the report? I can't get mine on my computer as well, so I'm my only one. Councillor Sackle. Uh, I see that Cooks went and cleaned the, uh, I guess, the parking lane off Main Street last night. Have you heard anything? Any compliments or any negatives? No negatives. One compliment, but uh, I'm sure as I talk to more people, there'll be more because they, they did a fine job. I'm curious to see what the invoice is going to be. And what this is going to cost, but uh, 
like I explained, I've talked to MIT today, and of course they're excited, I guess you can say, for lack of a better word. They're, they want this to happen, but uh, and they are open to suggestions on how they help pay us back. It's not, uh, <clears throat> they're not totally tied to the price per snowfall. They are willing to, to listen to proposals from us on how they want to be paid back, so they are thinking a little outside the box for this agreement, which is good. Councillor Deloria. So on the Main Street snow removal, how soon, like once we get our cost from Cook Brothers from yesterday, how soon will we be able to enter into an agreement with them? Because I mean, we've already cleared it twice on our dime. And I imagine it's not going to be retroactive pay for those times. So, so how soon can we get an agreement going forward? That's my first question. My second question is, I, I've always been a little bit confused that we we were always told we could never break it break it out. We could either take all or nothing. But now we're and maybe I was always uh, misunderstanding what all or nothing meant. But under what what we're proposing going forward, they're still going to clear on their way out of town in the morning after the first snowfall. And we will clear the parking lanes after. Right. So, what kind of breaking it out did were we talking about before? Because that's what I thought breaking it out meant was, they, and they wouldn't want to do that. Breaking like I, we were always talking, say from <coughs> TD Bank to Credit Union, they wouldn't do just from Fourth to Ninth. We have to do from Eighty Three to Subway and Main Street to the Bridge. And so okay. Breaking so, out. But, but we were just talking distances. <clears throat> okay, so but, but what Cooks did last night was just the downtown core area, correct? Yeah, well, they did from, uh, I, well, I think it's uh, the MP, I guess it is, or okay. past KFC, but they still have to do fourth. Fourth wasn't done, that's a mistake on my part. Okay. Councillor Sacco, you had a question or a comment? No. no. Any other questions? Derek, on the report? And it will, fourth will get done tonight. They are going to push it to the side. It shouldn't take long. Council will get the details. Sorry. <coughs> on the cold storage, <coughs> on that question, is that now complete with the contractor and all the deficiencies have been dealt with? All the deficiencies have been dealt with, then it's complete, yeah. What about the uh, lift station down, going down six, or whatever, whatever street that is? The lift station, we had a construction meeting today. Uh, right now, the, the electrical contractor couldn't schedule an inspection with hydro before Christmas, so we have to wait till the, the second week of January. Once that's complete, then the mechanical contractor can switch the pumps over. Uh, we're looking at substantial completion. It'll be just past the midpoint of January, probably the third week from the week of January. So this, this one seemed to have taken a little bit longer than, than the Hayes one that we did last year. Was there issues? Uh, just uh, waiting on, there was the MCCs that the electrical contractor lost two weeks on, but everything else probably over eight weeks on hydro getting... Oh, on the, on the service chain. And the natural gas installation, which just happened last week. <clears throat> that was months. Okay, any other questions or comments? We have the resolution moved by Councillor Memorial, seconded by Councillor Delory, resolve that the superintendent works report be received. Discussion? Favor, opposed, carry. Okay, uh, the next item on the agenda, the overdue utility accounts. Uh, that was just an attachment on my report. It's just for council to look at regarding uh, our requirements to call uh, family services in the event that someone lets us know that there's a child in the home when we're about to shut their water off. So that's just for your information. Okay. okay, you also have the management meeting minutes from December 7th and December 14th. Any questions to Julie or Derek on those? Councillor Morio. Um, I see uh, Patty's on her so uh, preparing an RFP for an arena assessment. Do we have any? What's that all about? We have a, uh, the heating floor. Uh, it's a
from whom he was an assessment done on the building. So she's found some, you know, some pretty good information. It was done by an AP. Did she show it to you? I haven't seen it. Okay. I think it was done by AP a number of years ago. And so she'll probably phone them first and, and have a discussion with them before she goes any further with the RFP. So she'll, she'll be budgeting that in the, her budget this year? I believe so, but um, I'd have to okay, confirm so. that. <laughs> that. Yeah, that, that's the plan, yes. Yeah. If Julie seems quiet, it's because she was at the dentist. And she's <laughs> still frozen. No, well, my throat is a little bit raw. Still, but, uh, a lot of drilling. Okay. Any other questions on the management meeting minutes? Okay. We have council member and CA reports. Councilor Sackle, any reports? Uh, not too much to report. Had a meeting back with Derek and Ms. Lance and. Uh, David was there too, on the uh, possibility of, I guess, looking at the future of recycling and garbage pickup into the town of Swan River and looking at different scenarios and possibly some cost savings. Other than that, I don't have too much else to report. Okay. Councilor Friesen. Um, uh, me too. A couple of fun things. Uh, I attended the Swan uh, Valley Agricultural Supper. Um, I was also at the museum at the Nativity, uh, Live Nativity, which is a great thing to go to. Hats off to the ministerial. And the foundation uh, gave Premies and Bloom $1,000, and it's to go towards new curbing around the big flower bed where the children's monument is, which we will go at in the spring. And then this Saturday is our memorial candle lighting at the cemetery if we go ahead and have it. We're having some issues with the candles. Other than that, we're good. Okay. Councilor Woody. I had the pleasure of attending with your worship and uh, others the uh, John Cotton Road to dedication at, uh, to Thunder Hill. What a wonderful man and what a wonderful dedication by Swan Valley West to make that happen. I appreciate it. I went to the Community Foundation uh, grant presentation and we accepted money. I accepted money and <coughs> to go toward uh, tables for the hall, the Veterans Hall. It's very kind and what a wonderful concept. They have over two million bucks right now and another bunch of money sitting on there. Hopefully they can act as soon. Uh, we had a safe house meeting and the ladies had a, a meeting with Minister Fielding and he was cautiously optimistic with them, or they came back optimistic that there's a possibility of money uh, coming, which I'm from Missouri, show me. Uh, Prairie Mountain Health meeting, uh, they're having a concern right now in our community relative to dialysis spots. Uh, we don't appear to have, oh, we don't have enough nurses to do that work. And Ada Husak, I chatted with her about it after. She's trying to change the process where the nurses can do part of their training through telehealth as opposed to leaving the community for whatever it is, six to eight weeks, they can maybe do four in telehealth, which would make it a little more attractive, but no commitment yet. And some issues relative to getting x-ray uh, technician people. A couple little asides, uh, there's some snow piled up in the Ag Society on the west east side of the yard, and that's bending the fence down, and I'm assuming that might be our snow. So they might be coming back to chat with us a little bit. Bending the white fence? The chain link fence and on the outside, and it looks to be bending out with the snow on it. And uh, I talked to the president of the University College of the North, uh, Doug Lovstad, and uh, he has asked, we've agreed that I'll try to set up a meeting with him and the management of uh, the new, uh, what do they call it, Aspire Dental Clinic, yeah, to, to possibly, very embryonic, train uh, dental assistance hygienists through the UCM system. And he's excited about coming out to talk. And I've talked to some of the guys at Aspire, and they're going to get together in the near future, have lunch, and see where they go from that. Well, that'd be great for our community. We've got more people in for more specific training. Great for our, our dental association people who have more people that, would, that they could say and work locally and always call from local people. So I, I was pretty excited about that call today. Councilor Moria, um, we had an environmental. Uh, 
uh, committee meeting there that uh, Councillor Sackle talked about where we had a presentation from the Public Works uh, Department regarding garbage and recycling proposal and look forward to the next uh, uh, meeting with the additional information that you guys are going to be digging up. Um, other than that, uh, I'd just like to wish uh, everybody else uh, and the community a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Councillor Delory. <coughs> Uh, not much to report since last meeting. I've been stuck at work for many, many hours, so I wasn't attending too many other meetings. Councillor Jacobson. Uh, basically the same, but I did attend that environmental uh, uh, committee meeting as well, and I thought that was pretty interesting as, well, as far as how and what kind of changes may be made with recycling and garbage collection. So we'll see how the rest of the committee comes up with uh, proposals in the new year and uh, and, and that, but uh, looks uh, like something that we need to do, especially if we're looking at the cost, like we're exceeding well over a million dollars a year, so we really have to look at uh, curbing some of those uh, costs. As well as so for me, I wish the community also a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, as well as to Mayor and Council. For me, I attended a lot of the same things. Um, I did uh, have the opportunity during the, where they had the Christmas trees at the library to read to Mrs. Atkinson's grade two class. That was quite an adventure. I can't remember in all my teaching years having a class so enthusiastic <laughs> as those grade two. So <laughs> it was kind of fun. Uh, I also uh, was, as part of the foundation, uh, had the opportunity to go out to Patterson, which was forming the coalition, and they raised $14,500 for the uh, Health Facilities Foundation through a draw. Uh, that's that's amazing, like they had like two weeks to do it. So. And last night I uh, attended the Vet Services Board. Things are changing there in the new province uh, red tape reduction thing. The province is stepping back from the Vet Services Board and letting the municipalities run it. Before they used to have, uh, because the right now the Vet Services Board receives $19,000 a year from the province before the province required a provincial employee to be on the board to sort of watch over their money. So they're stepping back from that now. They will not uh, require a separate audit. They'll accept the audit from the Vet Services Board at the end of the year. And the person that was the provincial rep was also the secretary treasurer. So now the board has to decide whether one of us will do it or we would hire somebody to do it. And the good news about the Vet Services Board, the budget amount proposed is the same as last year, so there's no increase <coughs> in their budget. One thing that has happened with the Vet Services Board, uh, we were paying off the building, there was a mortgage on the building, that is now paid off, and the decision of the board was that if we have surplus funds now that the money would go into a reserve fund, because uh, within the next two or three years the roof is going to have to be replaced on that building. So instead of going back to the taxpayers for uh, additional money or the municipalities, but there would be money in the reserve fund to probably cover that off. And that's it. I also wish everybody a uh, Merry Christmas, and I hope you have an enjoyable time with your family and friends over the Christmas season, and all the best in the new year. I've lost my, my program here. Time out. There we go. Okay. Julie, I forgot about you, I'm sorry. Uh, we had a, a budget meeting. So just to let you know, we are working on budget. We're, we're not quite ready to give you anything yet, but we're working hard at it. And um, we'd like to get closer to having some actual numbers in there, even from 2017, before we present it to you. And um, working on prep work for upcoming negotiations, uh, working on my uh, online training for EMO, the incident command system training. I completed that uh, the other day. Just have the other course to do, so um, whoever hasn't completed it yet, just a reminder to, to do that as soon as you can. And I've been out spreading Christmas cheer to our different departments, taking some baking and cooking uh, cookies, and uh, wishing everyone a Merry Christmas. And um, that's about it. Yeah. And Merry Christmas to everyone. Thank you. So the next we'll go to bylaws, okay, item 7 1. 
We have the motion moved by Councillor Morial, seconded by Councillor Delorey, resolved at bylaw 18 2017, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish a rate for police protection as a special service in the town of Swan River. River for the years 2018-19, both inclusive. We read a second time. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor White, resolved that bylaw 18 2017, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish a rate for police protection as a special service for the town of Swan River for the years 2018 19, both inclusive, be read a third time and be passed. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor White, resolved that bylaw 19, 2017, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish a rate for the following special services fire protection, street lighting, street cleaning, sidewalks and boulevards, ditches and drainage, doctor recruitment, snow removal and dust control, road maintenance and reconstruction, and emergency measures for the town of Swan River for the years 2018 and 19, both inclusive be read a second time. Discussion? All in favor? The motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor White, resolved that bylaw 19, 2017, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, to establish a rate for the following special services fire protection, street lighting, street cleaning, sidewalks and boulevards, ditches and drainage, doctor recruitment, snow removal and dust control, road maintenance and reconstruction, and emergency measures for the town of Swan River for the years 2018 and 2019, both inclusively read a third time and be passed. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor White, resolved that bylaw 20 2017, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, to establish a rate for the collection of garbage and recycling material and the operation of the landfill site as a special service for the town of Swan River for 2018, <coughs> be read a second time. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor White, resolved that bylaw 20, 2017, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, to establish a rate for the collection of garbage and recycling material and the operation of a landfill site as a special service for the town of Swan River for 2018, be read a third time and be passed. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. The motion moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Councilor White, resolved that bylaw 21 2017, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, to amend its bylaw number 5 2017, which provided for the expenditure and borrowing for the purchase of firefighting equipment, 15 self contained breathing apparatus, a mobile rack, and backwards be read a second time. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Sapp, resolved that bylaw 21 2017, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, to amend its bylaw number 5 2017, which provided for the expenditure and borrowing uh, of the purchase of firefighting equipment, 15 self contained breathing apparatus, mobile rack, and batteries. We read a third time and be passed. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor Fries and seconded by Councillor Sackle resolved that bylaw 23 2017 being a bylaw of the town of Swan River authorizing the payment of remuneration to member of council be read a second time. Discussion? Yeah. Councillor like, Delorea. I'd like to just make a comment that uh, we're trying to set the tone at the top here with this, and uh, our, our previous uh, indemnity block bylaw didn't actually, uh, uh, it uh, gave us an uh, a increase, I believe. And this is a new one we're passing, leaving us with uh, 
staying the same as, as the previous year. I think it's just important for that to be on the record because I'm not sure not, not all the public will read the actual bylaw, so our indemnities will not be going up next year. Any other discussion? All in favor? Oh, Councilor Mori, I'll have to call that. I just want to reiterate what Councilor Gloria said, just setting the tone um, for the upcoming budget year and stuff like that, um, that uh, we are foregoing from the previous bylaw that the cost of living allowance increase that we're was allocated in the last bylaw that we're increasing that this year's current rate. So um, I think it's a good step that uh, council leads by example in the past of this bylaw. Any other discussion? All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Fries and second by Councillor White resolved that bylaw 23 2017, being the bylaw of the town of Swan River authorizing the payment of remuneration to members of council be read a third time and be passed. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councilor Fries and second by Councilor White resulted by law 25, 2017, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to commit holiday and Sunday shopping in the town of Swan River be said a second time. Discussion? Yeah, Councilor Delorean. I, I just want to make a comment that um, I'm sure uh, uh, Mr. Rivet probably is not going to agree with, agree with me, but I'll, I'll be voting in favor of this uh, resolution. Not that I want to see anybody overburdened unless they want to work overtime, but I'm, and, I'm sh and under current labor law, there's no mandatory overtime, so 40 hours a week, whether it happens on whatever days, but I just don't like the fact that, I don't like any type of government paternalism that says it, this is what you have to do. I mean, our, our uh, business operators, are fully within their capabilities of running a business. I'm sure they can decide when it's best for them to be open and not open. Um, so I'll be voting in favor of it. But uh, I do understand the need for, for days off. But And actually, as a person who I work shift work for many years, nights, uh, days, weekends, so a lot of times it was an inconvenience because that was my day, only day off with my family. And we wanted to go do something, but we needed to run to the store and grab something before we could carry on with our day kind of you know, if we could have got that out of the way in the, in the morning, we would have had the whole day to uh, spend together. But uh, that's an aside, and uh, that's just my comment on okay. the matter. I will comment next, and then I'll, I'll be voting against it. Uh, what I think is that we've had requests from one business to extend the shopping hours. So it's not like a mass number of businesses have requested that. And uh, I feel that uh, I would vote for an amendment to this, that it, it would be extended for this year because... Uh, of the one occasion, I think it happens every seven years that uh, Christmas Eve falls on uh, on a Sunday. So I would accept the amendment to go for this year, uh, but I would vote against it as it is. Any other comments, Councilor Moore? I was just going to have the same comment. Okay, Councilor Sacco. I know the resolution will read that you know businesses would be allowed to open up at nine, but you don't have to. Like I, I run two businesses and. Uh, we are open Saturday at one of them, and uh, the people that are working are management, and, and it is me. I don't expect my employees to come in, nor do I make them come in. So I think it is up to the individual businesses if they choose to be open Sunday, Saturday, pick their hours. I don't want to be hamstrung ham by, by somebody telling me when or telling me what is the best hours of operation for my business. Every business, I think, is different. Uh, and I think if, if some people want to be open on, on Sundays and they feel there's there's a business case for it, then I, why should I say no to them? Uh, it's up to the it's up to the business owner. Let them decide what's what's right for them. That that's just my culture more in a sense. Um, with this bylaw, I see that I agree with uh, Council Dory and Sackle that it's it's up to the business. It's not telling them when. They should set their hours in business. It gives them the opportunity. Uh, it gives them the ability, if they so choose, to compete with other communities that do open up earlier. Um, so it's uh, basically a, we're letting the businesses decide for themselves if they want to be open or not, and then they can have that discussion with their employees and, and go from there. So, but uh, Councilor Glory and Councilor White. Um, I just wanted to make a comment on uh, your worship's comment about amending it just for uh, when when it lands on a Sunday. To me, that's even smacks of even worse paternalism than not allowing it at all. So we're going we think that you're able to choose uh, when you, when it's right for you to open your business once every seven years. 
uh, uh, the other six years that you, you don't have that ability. So we're caving into the almighty dollar there. Council White. I think with my heart, my mother said it's far more important than my brain, maybe I don't know. But <laughs> my heart says that I think people should have a day where they can be with their families, and uh, I suspect most of our businesses could do okay uh, as they are, so I'm going to be willing against it. Council Friesen. I, just, I think it's well and good that a business can decide when, but that's if you have one or two people working. This is probably a grocery store, and there's probably lots of young people that don't really want to work all day Sunday and that could be their day off but then again it could be their only s source of income so I'm torn but I am going to go against it. Councillor Jacobson. <laughs> well I'm also weighing in on it too. Being a business person in the town too I'm torn because we generally do not open on Sundays. We do have the option if we want to be open on Sundays and, <coughs> uh, and that but uh, as far as you know, granting that, that wish, yeah, we only have maybe one or two people that that want to uh, to be open that day or asking us to change us because of this one time. So it's not an easy decision to make, and, uh, and and at the end of the day, it is up to the business people if they want to be open. And do we want to hamstring them to to you know, give them the choice to? To, uh, to have that choice. In, in today's world, the provincial government passed legislation to give them that option or us that option, so I feel that maybe that's what we should do. So. Okay. Any other discussion? Can I report a vote, please? Sorry. It'll come on third reading. Okay. Okay. If that's okay. If it, if, it, if it gets defeated on second reading, do we even go to a third reading, though? No, so, no, so I'll have a report a vote okay. on the second reading, please. Any other discussion? Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Motion's carried. Motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Sackler, resolved that Bylaw 25 2017 being in Bylaw of the Town of Swan River to permit holiday and Sunday shopping in the Town of Swan River to be read a third time and be passed. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? <coughs> carried. We have the motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sackler, resolved that Councillors follow but hereby approve for payment general accounts from check 21694 to 21790 for a total of 365961 and payroll account from check 4118 to 4131 for a total of 140787 Questions to Julie on the checks. Councillor DeLorean. Just a comment, and I don't know if you passed on last one, but I just want to Terry's uh, powers of, of anticipating a question are quite uh, adept, so it's I like what he's doing here. He's anticipating exactly what we're going to ask. So you'd probably pass it on to your rest of your managers that, hey, anticipate what council's going to ask you. So that's, uh, that's really good. It makes us not even have to ask any questions. Councillor Sackle. I'll ask one for fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go after the first one. Check number 21694, Timrick Welding and Machine. I'm sure it would be phased or hydraulic hose, but I couldn't see for sure. Okay, let me check.
Do you have the number to it? Okay. Any other questions? All in favor of the resolution? Carried. We have the motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen, whereas the Government of Canada has confirmed its intention to make cannabis a legal substance in Canada effective July 2nd, 2018, and whereas the Government of Manitoba has acknowledged that the timeline is very tight, but has announced initial provincial plans for regulation, distribution, and retailing of cannabis in Manitoba, the province has opened a request for proposals process for private sector organizations who may want to provide distribution and retail franchises to cover the majority of the province and has included the opportunity for online sale provisions. And whereas on November 28, <coughs> 2017, the Minister of Growth, Enterprise and Training has announced that the Association of Manitoba Municipalities Convention that he wished to receive an indication from municipalities as to their intention to work with the province in establishing zoning locations and other parameters of the respective distribution of cannabis within municipalities through the province. The province has asked for a response from municipalities as by December 22, 2017. This information is being collected through the AMM for immediate term <coughs> planning processes. Therefore, be it resolved, the town of Swan River immediately respond in the affirmative to the Minister of Growth, Enterprise and Training through the AMM survey that the town of Swan River be allowing cannabis to be sold from retail locations within the municipality. A copy of this resolution is also being forwarded to the Minister of Growth Enterprise Training prior to December 22nd deadline. Therefore, be it further resolved, the town of Swan River reserves the right to change its position on the matter, and the above affirmative response is not binding on the town of Swan River. Discussion. Councillor Jacobson, then Councillor Deloria, then Councillor Morey. So, first of all, I feel that the federal government is moving way too rapidly on this, this whole thing. But unfortunately, it's, it's going to happen on July the 1st or July the 2nd, no matter what. And, and we all know that uh, residents will be able to purchase the, the, the cannabis through uh, online shopping or whatever, even if it's banned or not banned, but they can't purchase it at retail locations. So. But with this resolution, I feel that it opens the door for us to at least, you know, like, you know, if there's revenues that we can receive from the provincial government, because that's not even dealt with or, or planned out between uh, us and the provincial government, this resolution does give us an opportunity to back out of it as well. So uh, I'm, I'm okay with that uh, because of that clause in there. So. Councillor Gloria. I just wanted to uh, request a recorded vote on this issue, and I, and I guess uh, just to kind of echo what Councillor Jacobson said, uh, cannabis is coming whether we like it or not. I mean, what that argument is a, for a whole different time. This is basically saying it's coming. Do we want to be a part of it? It's going to be here whether we like it or not. Uh, this, like uh, Councillor Jacobson said, this is an opportunity a to have some input on zoning, where these things can be set up. Uh, it's opportunity to possibly re receive some uh, some funding as far as tax revenue from uh, cannabis sales. So I I. Uh, think we need to be have a seat at the table when it comes to this so I'll be voting in favor of this resolution. Councillor Moran. Um, I agree with uh, fellow councillors uh, Jacobson and Glory uh, regarding that cannabis is here it's a fact of life that it's in the community already um, this allows us to be at a seat at the table but it also provides uh, an opportunity to get regulated or a safe supply of cannabis um, versus getting it from uh, the black market where you don't know what kind of product you're getting it to be laced with different types of chemicals or drugs like fentanyl and all that other stuff. Um, so this way at least you could have, uh, if we do have a retailer set up shop in the community, uh, the people that do choose to uh, participate in that uh, uh, activity will have a, a safe, uh, secure product that they know is uh, guaranteed. Councillor Sapp. I guess almost all, every point that I was going to bring up is covered again uh, by every councillor. Uh, yeah, it, it is coming fast and, and uh, it's sad that the federal government is pushing it uh, at us at this quick of a rate. I know when we were at AMM and we had a chance to meet with the RCMP and the RCMP are, are struggling with, with the device that they're going to be able to use to test, uh, you know, to see if people are drinking or, or I mean, smoking or 
on cannabis and driving, and, and they still haven't they still haven't figured it out yet. They're they're down to two machines, and they they still have to make a decision and have all this done before July second. And even if we said no against it, it's still going to be in the community. It, it's going to be online. Uh, the provincial government has told us people can buy it in other communities and. You know, maybe we are going to provide a, a safe feature, just as Councillor Morio says. You know, there are people that are going to buy it, whether whether they're going to buy it from the store, or they're going to buy it from the black market. At least from the store, it's going to be regulated, and hopefully, it'll be a safer <coughs> choice for for the people that are going to try it. So, I'll be speaking and voting in favor of it as well. Any other comments? I'll be voting in favor of it also. Uh, the main reason that I attended attended the sessions at AMM. Uh, the thing that gets me that the, the amount of uh, cannabis that has been sold on the black market now, uh, there's no control over it, could be laced with phenytoin or other uh, types of harmful kinds of drugs, and at least if the people are given the option that are using it to buy it legally, that they, that health threat would be eliminated. Um, just wanted to make a comment, the recorder vote is going to be on the back of there. I, I see uh, his worship mayor is written on the back. Can you make sure that that gets as part of the resolution it gets forward to the minister's office? And then also in there, uh, part of the resolution was to forward it to the minister's office. I just wanted to make sure that they're aware that we want to be, have that town of Swan River, should this pass, wants a seat at the table, wants to be involved. So, because I know it was supposed to go through the AMM, which it will, but Sometimes it's best to put your foot in a few different doors. Okay, any other discussion or comments? Any calling for a recorded vote? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. The motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen, resolved that the Swan Valley Interagency 2017 membership fee of $100 be approved for payment. Councillor Jacobson. Any uh, comments? No comments, no. Um, the committee, uh, this is a, a, a fee that we, uh, agreed to pay them annually, and they were here with us last year and uh, looking for. Uh, their membership again to help the committee, help people in the community. Any other discussion? All in favor of the resolution? Opposed? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen, whereas the attached amounts receivable have been outstanding for some time and whereas management feels these amounts are uncollectible, be it resolved that we do hereby write off the amounts receivable 9,966.01 as attached. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen, whereas the capital budget for the year 2017 included office flags, furniture, railing to be borne by the General Reserve for a total of 14800 and whereas flag poles have been purchased at a cost of $3,240. Be it resolved to 3240 be transferred from the General Reserve Fund to the General Operating Fund. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. So these are coming from the Chief Financial Officer. Is that Can I just make one comment on the previous resolution regarding the, the $9,000 we just rolled off? Can we make sure that we're not taking any recycling from those municipalities that didn't pay? I, I don't think we are, but I just don't want to be still. And can you make sure the Lions know that too? That yeah. those municipalities know where recycling to come from them if they're not going to pay. We have the motion moved by Councilor Deloria, second by Councilor Jacobson, whereas the Swan Valley Handy Transit Van budget for the year 2017 includes 105600 for the Handy Van Storage Building, with 26400 to be borne by the Handy Transit Van Replacement Reserve Fund, and whereas costs incurred to date are a total of 69979 be it resolved 26400 be transferred from the Handy Van Replacement Reserve Fund to General Operating Fund. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. <coughs> the 
The motion moved by Councilor Deloria, seconded by Councilor Jacobson, resolved that Niall Williams be hired as a casual customer service representative, effective December 5th, 2017. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councilor Deloria, seconded by Councilor Jacobson, resolved that Michelle Doverspike be hired as a part-time customer service rep for a term position March 31st, 2018 to December 12th. If, to March 31st, 2018, effective December 12th, 2017. Discussion? All in favor? The motion moved by Councilor Deloria, seconded by Councilor Jacobson, whereas the capital budget for the year 2017 included $300,000 for the 13th Avenue water and sewer renewal with $250,000 to be borne by the water and sewer reserve fund and whereas costs incurred for the to date uh, total $373,915.24 be it resolved that $250,000 to be transferred from the water and sewer reserve fund to the utility operating fund. Discussion? Councilor Moria. Uh, Derek, maybe you can clarify that. So from what I understand here, this the project went over budget by seventy-three thousand bucks. Well, I haven't had a, a chance to to go through the details in a, with a fine-tooth comb, but uh, that is what has been recorded to that project so far. Yes, but there's still I like I said I haven't had a look at the storm work that was done on that issue, and just uh, I basically need to go through the, all those uh, what's been charged to that account with a fine-tooth comb. I am anticipating an overage. We knew we were going to be over uh, due to a mistake on the job and some things that were out of our control, but uh, I still have to go through this with a fine tooth comb and sit down with Terry. <clears throat> Any other discussion? A, a large, large part of the overage is going to be due to the, the hydro uh, installation? No, this is the 13th North oh, water sewer. Rain. Oh, that, oh, with the cave in there, yes. It'll be the cave in, yeah. the storm sewer break, and okay. the misgreed for okay. 38 meters. <clears throat> Any other discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. The motion only need a second, if I know. We got one without a second, two without a second. Motion moved by Councilor Delore, second by Councilor Jacobson, whereas the financial plan for the year 2017 with included withdrawal from employee benefits reserve in the amount of $38,828.93, and whereas the total expense resulting from the increase in the estimated pre retirement bonus entitlement liability from December 31st, 2016 to December 31st, 2017 is calculated at $40,611.96. Be it resolved that $38,838.93 be transferred from the Employee Benefit Reserve Fund to the General Operating Fund to offset the pre-retirement bonus entitlement expense. Questions? Councilor Delora. The, the liability for this, that's for two employees? Yes. Yeah. We, we just had two retire this yeah. year, yeah? Okay. Any other, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. The motion moved by Councilor Delorea, second by Councilor Jacobson, whereas the Richardson Recreation and Wellness Center budget for the year 2017 included $28,000 reserve transfer for hot water tank Dectron pumps, and whereas the purchases have been made for the Dectron expansion module uh, replacement for 2066-04, and the outdoor condenser unit replacement for 3,989.80, and Dectron compressor for 1,140.48. Be it resolved that 7,105.32 be transferred from the Recreation Facilities Reserve Fund to the General Operating Fund for the purchases. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, seconded by Councillor Delore, whereas the Richardson Recreation and Wellness Center. This looks like the same one. Yeah, but it's, I was going to ask how come they couldn't have been combined? It's for a different. I don't know. Um, that it's a separate one because the item hasn't been purchased yet. It's just okay. going to be ordered. So, Whereas the Richardson Recreation and Wellness Center budget for the year 2017 included $28,000 reserve transfer from 
for a hot water tank, the Ectron and pumps, and whereas such pumps will be ordered at approximately the cost of $3,000, be it resolved the lesser of $3,000 or the actual cost of the pumps be transferred from the Recreation Facilities Reserve Fund to the General Operating Fund. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Motion moved by Councilor Delorier, second by Councilor Jacobson, whereas the capital budget for the year 2017 included $45,000 for sidewalk, various areas to be borne by gas tax reserve, and whereas such sidewalk has been installed at a cost of $5,212.46, be it resolved that $5,212.46 be transferred from the Federal Gas Tax Reserve Fund to the General Operating Fund. Discussion? In favor? Opposed? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, seconded by Councillor Delorey, whereas the capital budget for the year 2017 included $65,000 for the 6th Avenue storm sewer outlet to be borne by the gas tax reserve fund, and whereas the costs recorded to date are $58,940.03, therefore it be resolved that the lesser $65,000, the actual cost of the project, be transferred from the federal gas tax reserve fund to the general operating fund once the actual cost has been determined. Discussion? In favor? Opposed? Carried. The motion moved by Councilor Delorier, second by Councilor Jacobson, resolved that pursuant to Section 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Thank you. 